welcome back. So, in this lecture we are going to talk about switch mode power converter topologies and some power stage design aspect of uh, you know the converters which uh, for which we are going to consider hardware demonstration. So, here we will be talking about the power stage design aspect of back and boost converter and we will be talking about their steady state operation under continuous conduction mode as well as discontinuous conduction mode. Then we will talk about some basic operation of full bridge LLC converter which will be considered as a demonstration uh, experimental demonstration using STM32 microcontroller and we will be also talking about boost PFC and totem pole PFC. So, one totem pole PFC case study will be considered using C2000 series microcontroller. So, if we take a buck converter in continuous conduction mode this waveforms are known and if we take the ripple parameter the inductor current ripple can be expressed in terms of input output voltage and the on time ok. Now, if we want to uh, consider the ripple uh, voltage up capacitor voltage then by means of charge balance we can actually get and this expression can be obtained in terms of on off time and this is discussed in lecture 7 in our earlier NPTEL course. Now, under pulse wave modulation when the on time and off time sum is fixed that is our switching period and the on time is d times the time period and off time is 1 minus d time then we can write the ripple parameters in terms of this where we are talking about a voltage regulator where output voltage will be fixed. Now, this ripple will be maximum when the d is minimum that means this d is minimum and this d minimum means the input voltage is the maximum because we are regulating the output voltage. Similarly, the output voltage ripple will be maximum when d is minimum. So, both worst case condition will be the highest input voltage where the current and voltage ripple will be maximum and this we have discussed in lecture 7 in our earlier course. Now, if we talk about the RMS uh, value how to compute for a piecewise linear waveform and we have discussed in our lecture 7 in the earlier course that we can derive by means of integration this is the expression where these are the x1, x2, x3 and it is repeating periodic signal. Now, if we use this formula to find out the RMS current of the inductor uh, current of the buck converter, it can be shown that it is square of the load current that is the average inductor current plus delta L square by 12 where delta L is the ripple current. And here for a given load current that means if this is fixed then it will be worst when the ripple is maximum when the that means when the input voltage is maximum and higher the RMS current more the conduction loss. So, that is why if you go to any uh, commercial uh, you know the test cases of the efficiency curve you will find the efficiency plot slowly you know get reduced that means if you take the efficiency plot like this kind of efficiency plot if you take for high, higher input voltage it will slowly come down and this loss is due to more conduction losses. And also there will be switching loss also will increase for a higher input voltage. Now, for a given input voltage the load current that means the RMS current increases with load current that is why in the efficiency plot this side the efficiency slightly decrease slowly decrease because that side your conduct it is dominated by the conduction loss and, and this side it will be dominated by the switching loss under particularly light load condition. So, you will get at one point where the losses will be minimized and the efficiency will be maximum. So, either side your efficiency will fall right side will be dominated by conduction loss and as you increase the load current and if this is the load current uh, axis and this is the efficiency axis. So, as you increase the load current conduction loss increases as well as the as a result efficiency falls. So, the worst case RMS current will be the highest input voltage in the highest load current when the efficiency of the converter should be lowest that means that is the worst case and that critical condition we have to meet certain efficiency uh, requirement. And this is discussed in lecture 7 in our earlier NPTEL course. Now, in the design consideration if we take a large inductor and a small inductor and this is under open loop condition where we have made a load transient for a practical buck converter. It can be shown that large inductor actually un, it offer a smaller current ripple which may be good in terms of conduction loss point of view and also output ripple will be reduced. But it actually penalizes in terms of undershoot because the slew rate of the inductor current is, is a la, a small because of a higher inductor value. Whereas, the smaller inductor 
it although it gives you larger uh, you know current RMS value sorry variable, but it actually reduces the undershoot drastically because it hovers the lower higher sleeve rate. So, in, in the choice of power stretch parameter, we need to be very careful about the choice of inductor and as well as the capacitor. So, and this issue is discussed in lecture 7, if we take a large inductor, the advantage will be current ripple will be smaller. So, RMS current will be smaller and conduction loss may be reduced and also voltage ripple is a function of you know this uh, current ripple. That means, you know if you take the output voltage because the inductor is large, so 1 by L, so this will be smaller. But this argument is that bulky inductor, so size will increase slower transient response because if you go to you know subsequent, we have discussed in our earlier course that larger inductor will impose a limit. If you take a voltage mode control, the LC pole that will come even at a low frequency and it will be very difficult to compensate. Then higher voltage undershoot and overshoot due to the larger inductor. So, you have to be very careful about the inductor choice. If you talk about the capacitor, if you take a large cap, it offers a smaller output voltage ripple. It can also reduces overshoot undershoot of the output voltage, but the size is bulky as well as the reliability will be poor. And also if you are talking about the DVS, then this reference voltage change because the large cap, you have to change a large energy and that will cause higher current overshoot undershoot. So, you have to be very careful about the selection of the capacitor. And this we have discussed in lecture 7 in our earlier course. Now, the worst case current ripple for the buck converter, if we consider under pulse width modulation, it will be worst at the highest input voltage that we have discussed. If you take constant on time, it will be highest at the highest input voltage that is the current ripple is largest that is the worst case current ripple. Under constant off time, it is independent of the you know I would say input voltage. So, that means it is insensitive and this we have discussed in lecture 23 in our earlier course. Now, the worst case inductor current in a buck converter in continuous conduction mode, this is nothing but uh, if you consider in CCM worst case RMS current. It is the same as your uh, ripple current because for average RMS current is nothing but uh, the average inductor current square plus uh, RMS ripple current square by 12. So, the analogy will be same for this. The only difference since the load current is coming into picture, the worst case RMS is also a function of load current. It will be highest at the highest load current and this is for and also it is highest for highest input voltage for both these cases, but it is insensitive to input voltage for constant of time and that we have discussed in lecture 23. Now, if you take the switching frequency for variable frequency, fixed frequency is fixed for variable frequency, you know it has been we have discussed in lecture 23 in our earlier course. That means, the switching frequency will be maximum for the highest input at the lowest input voltage. For constant of time, the switching frequency is highest at the highest input voltage. So, you have to be very careful about the selection of this constant on of time and that is why most of the product sometimes they use adaptive on of time. So, that the high large variation in the switching frequencies may not be acceptable. So, if you talk about discontinuous conduction mode, we know about the waveform and if we take the steady state because in DCM we generally do not operate in pulse width modulation when the load current decreases because you have a higher switching loss. Maybe the ripple will be slightly reduced as the load current decreases, but if it is within the acceptable limits no problem. So, we do not need this feature at all because we have to only maintain the output voltage ripple within a specified limit. But if we take constant on time, the output voltage ripple will be more or less insensitive to load but the switching frequency linearly reduces with the load current if the input voltage is constant. Then if the input voltage changes, then we have to use a current based constant on time control and that thing we have discussed in lecture 24 in our earlier course. So, if you take a boost converter, the only difference here will be the ripple inductor current again will be a function of on state as well as the input voltage. So, the inductor current ripple will be maximum when the input voltage is also that means, it is in terms of input voltage. So, it is it cannot be straight away calculated. If you use a constant on time, then it is maximum for V in max, but what will happen for pulse width modulation and this is discussed in lecture 7. For pulse width modulation, if we consider uh, you know this is for constant 
in generic term of on time and off time under PWM and if it on time is nothing but d into t and t of is 1 minus d into t. So, if you write this expression in for PWM it can be found it is it can be shown that it is d into 1 minus d. So, the inductor current ripple is maximum if it is used for a out regulator voltage is fixed then it is maximum at 50 percent duty ratio and this is discussed in lecture 7 in our earlier course. So, the ripple output voltage is a function of load current and it can be written for a for under PWM that ripple voltage is maximum when the D is maximum as well as the load current is maximum. So, that means the worst case voltage ripple will be lowest input voltage and the highest load current and we have to be very careful about the selection of capacitor because we need to meet certain ripple constant for the entire range of load current and input voltage condition. And this issue is discussed in lecture 7. So, the worst case current ripple for the boost converter under continuous conduction mode if you use a pulse width modulation it is the worst at the half of the input voltage that means when the duty ratio is half sorry. So, that means the input voltage is just double the output uh, half the output voltage or basically output voltage is 2 times the input voltage. And for constant on time it is maximum when the input voltage is maximum and for constant off time it is the maximum at the lowest input voltage and this is discussed in lecture 7 I think it should be lecture 23 in our earlier course. Then switching frequency of the boost converter this is also in fixed frequency it is fixed for variable frequency it depends on highest switching frequency will happen at the lowest input voltage for this case and it will happen at the highest input voltage for constant of time and this we have discussed in lecture 23. Now in this course we will also have LLC converter full bridge. So, if we take a full bridge LLC converter first of all why it is used? So, it offers high efficiency and high power density because we are using a resonant uh, circuit. So, that means we can operate at a much higher switching frequency so that the magnetic size can be reduced. So, we can achieve high power density the magnetic integration that means this LM can be part of the transformer ok. And then it offer low EMI because of the resonating operation the it is not like unlike like a hard switching converter. So, yeah here you can achieve low EMI because of the resonating behavior and we can operate at a higher switching frequency. Now, if in the in case of a resonant converter basically this LLC converter depending upon the power level your operating frequency changes. So, we know that the resonating frequency it depends on the resonating tank, but our primary objective can we achieve the switching frequency same as the fundamental component of the switching frequency can we achieve same as the resonant frequency. So, if the power level decreases then our switching frequency be, will decrease with the power level and it will be below the resonating frequency and this is the waveform and during the condition when the resonant current that means the tank current is equal to the magnetizing current then there will be no current in the primary path. So, this diode will not conduct as a result it will be disconnected and it will behave like a RC network in the output side particularly during this duration. When you talk about a higher load condition the switching frequency increases. So, it will go above the resonating frequency and the waveform shape looks like this. So, both below resonant and the above resonant the waveform is not sinusoid that means it is a distorted waveform and if we extract the primary component the sinusoid it will also have harmonic content. But if we can match the switching frequency equal to the resonant frequency then the resonant tank waveform will look almost like a pure sine wave and there we can in fact reduce the harmonic content and you can achieve very high efficiency there. But this is somewhat difficult to achieve in order to maintain the resonant switching frequency and the in the uh, resonant frequency and the switching frequency it is difficult to equalize and that may be possible by means of additional degree of freedom. Sometimes this uh, this voltage because generally the LLC converter is used for on board charger off board charger where you have an input side power factor character circuit where the distilling voltage is the output of the PFC and if you can slowly adjust this voltage so that you can achieve resonant frequency for a somewhat wider range of power level that may be possible. Now in this course we are also going to talk about power factor character, but before you going to the bidirectional totem pole PFC the general 
uh, you know the full bridge that means diode bridge rectifier followed by the regular power factor boost power factor character that we know and this is like a this is a boost converter circuit and this boost converter the objective is that the inductor current of the boost converter is forced to follow the rectified current of the you know the, res, uh, the rectifier circuit so that the input voltage the AC input voltage and the line current that means the input current they should be in phase so that we can ensure unity power factor. So that is why the control objective for this PFC is to make the average inductor current to follow the rectified inductor current profile that means uh, the sorry the rectified output voltage profile that means is a scale down version that means if you have a rectified voltage like this rectified voltage like this then if we scale according to the power level then if this is your current profile the rectified then the inductor current has to maintain this kind of average. So, the average inductor current should maintain the ripple content of this inductor current will be absorbed by this high frequency capacitor, but then the average current will actually be the line current. So, if you can force the rectified current to follow this path then you can ensure that input current and the input voltage will be in phase and you can achieve unity power factor. So, typical mode of operation you can operate this boost converter either in a continuous conduction mode where the inductor current is always like above the zero level and you are tracking that uh, current profile to achieve P unity power factor. You can also operate in the critical conduction mode where it just touch the zero and then increases and then you can you have to make sure that average inductor current actually follow this. So, in this method you can see it is a variable frequency operation. So, this is a variable switching frequency operation frequency operation. So, you have to uh, make sure that the core of the inductor magnetic core should support that a variation of the inductor switching frequency as well as the ripple of the inductor current. So, that we have to ensure so that it should not saturate the inductor. The other possibility when the power level decreases in the PFC then the slowly inductor current goes into the discontinuous conduction mode and in this mode we can improve the efficiency, but the challenge is here how to make sure the average inductor can still follow the, the current difference so that you can ensure unity power factor and also the shape of the waveform should not be distorted particularly it is more challenging in DCM that while we maintain the unity power factor we also have to maintain that harmonic distortion is reduced so that is another objective. Now, if we go for totem pole we have we can replace this diode bridge because there will be a drop across the diode so that will be lossy. But now with the help of wide band gap device you can actually replace one of the hub bridge diode with the, the MOSFET and this MOSFET body diode as it behave like a diode in one of the hub bridge and this switch will operate in the line frequency low frequency whereas this fret actually is a wide band gap device particularly it can be a GAN devices or silicon carbide. So, in this course we are going to show GAN based uh, totem pole PFC where these devices will be operated at a much higher switching frequency it is like a boost operation where it can be hundreds of kilohertz whereas this switch will operate at low frequency it is like a line frequency like a 50 hertz or, or 60 hertz depending upon the whether it is in you know India or you know the other country where you use 60 hertz. So, that means we generally use a high frequency GAN devices for these switches this leg and the other leg operate in low frequency where we can use simply silicon devices. So, now in this course we will be talking about interleaf totem pole PFC because if the power level of this uh, converter increases then one inductor cannot handle so much current and we for better thermal distribution you can split that into two inductor it is like a multi phase it is called interleaf where you need such two legs of GAN devices each dedicated for each inductor and you also can get an additional benefit because if you can make suppose you know one inductor is following like this for one phase, but if you can ensure the other phase actually operate like a phase shifting operation that means it is turning on like this it is operating like this. So, that the net current seen by this can be reduced and you can also reduce as a result 
the filter capacitor requirement that means the output voltage ripple can also be reduced by means of interleaving operation the phase shifting operation. So, it has double benefit you can do phase shifting you can reduce the size of the capacitor and also you can reduce the power loss or, or you can distribute the current among multiple phases so that you can have a better thermal distribution and so that you can have a nice you know heat sink that means thermal arrangement. So, this interleaf uh, totem pole PFC one case study will be demonstrated using GAN devices and there we will be using C2000 series microcontroller and that will be demonstrated by expert from Texas Instruments. So, in summary we have discussed some power state design aspect of buck and boost converters. We have talked about buck and boost converter operation their steady state operation under CCM and DCM and we have discussed some aspect of the ripple under various modulation techniques. And we have also discussed the basic operation of full bridge LLC converter for varying frequency for when the load power level varies. And we have also discussed conventional boost PFC as well as the totem pole PFC for AC DC power conversion. And in this subsequent lecture when we will be talking about the hardware demonstration we will talk about a little bit detail about this converter and along particularly for buck and boost converter we will be talking about uh, you know their uh, schematic as well as some layout aspect that is it for today thank you very much.